Hi y'all, it's Susie. Welcome back to my craft room. Um, okay, uh, we are going to start on day, I believe it's 11 for honoring G. Kerr. First, let's talk about where we've been and where we're going. All right, so far we've made the, um, the pouch with the little journal and, um, you know, the tags and the, you know, all that. So we, we've done that. And then, you know, we've learned how to make some uh, different um, tags and envelopes and tucks and things like that. So everything has been leading up to things that you can put in your journals. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit more of that. But first, um, what we're going to do is we're going to end up making a journal with, with this kit that we're using now. So I have gone ahead and cut out my images. All of my images uh, are cut out. I've, I've gone ahead and fussy cut my um, ephemera pieces. So what I've done is I took 12 of the background pages, like this. I took 12 of these background pages, and then I took 11 uh, coffee dyed pages. I don't know how that got out of whack, but Anyway, so I took uh, 12 background and 11 coffee dyed. I alternated them. Um, a decorative piece, a coffee dyed piece. A decorative piece, a coffee dyed piece. Now, having said, and I'm going to have a total of 23 pages. So once they're folded in half, you know, and put in the journal, there's going to be a total of 46 pages in the journal. That's not counting, you know, any... Um, you know, kind of pocket things you might sew in, or maybe if you add some doily or whatever it is that you, you know, want to put in with this. So most of the time you make your journal cover and then you, you know, put your, your pages in. Well, this time I'm going to create my pages first, do my ephemera for it, and that way I can see how thick I need to make my journal cover. So I'm hoping to leave this as one signature, but I suspect with the way that I embellish things, it's going to end up being two signatures. Um, and so the journal cover that I had planned to work with this is probably not going to work because I'm probably going to embellish it a little heavier. So anyway, so I went ahead and I cut out my pages, alternated them, uh, you know, with a decorative page and a coffee dyed page. Now, if you don't want to use your decorative papers, as background pages and you just want to use coffee dyed paper then I would have used 23 pieces of coffee dyed paper cut to whatever size you want it to be um, my printer does not print borderless so I had to cut out you know each page and then you know I measured that once I got them cut out all of them cut out you know they came out about the same and then I cut my coffee dyed papers to be the same size so if you don't want to use your background pages for your journal pages and you want to save them to make your pockets and tags and tucks with, that's perfect. Um, I love to do that a lot because I, I do like, you know, plain pages in the journal and that way I can kind of decorate them up as I like to. But I also love to use these as journaling pages because what happens is once I have this, you open this up, you have this, then there's a coffee dyed piece in here. And then you end up with this. And so, you know, it's like, you know, kind of an alternate, um, you know, thing of, of pages. And some of them are decorative and some of them aren't. Whichever way you choose to do it is fine. Um, so I am going to proceed with this. And so I'm not going to do it on camera because, I'm, you know, it just takes time to fold all these in half and stick them inside of each other. Now... Um, I, we are going to work on making some more embellishments, and um, one of the first ones that we're going to do, let me see if my paper's dry. I tried to make some papers in advance. Um, all right, this one is, you know, one of the uh, background pages, but I printed out extra. So that's what I'm saying. If you don't want to use your background pages as journal pages and to use them in... Uh, you know, making, you know, pockets and tags and tucks and whatever, you can do that. Um, so, you know, do do you. Just however it is you like to do it, you do the way you want to do it. Okay, so um, we're going to make a few more, like, embellishment pieces that I'm going to specifically use in this journal. 
I hope that the things that we've covered already, you've made a template of so that you can, you know, make the pieces that you really like to go in your journal. Um, you know, this is kind of like doing things reverse of how we normally do it, which is to make your journal cover, put your pages in, and then, you know, make your ephemera pieces to fit. Well, you know, this way we're doing, you know, we've cut out our ephemera pieces. We are putting our pages together, and once we figure out how thick this is going to be, then we're going to make our journal cover. I went ahead and cut out all the ephemera. I've inked around it. Um, I, I punched the holes. I did put, you know, reinforcers on my tags. You, none of that's necessary. I cut out little corner pieces, went ahead and folded them around. I inked around the edges, um, and I did the same on the little pockets. You know, don't, do not glue these flaps down because you want that extra so it holds more in there. But go ahead and fold them over. Ink around your edges, you know, however you want to uh, have them. Uh, also, all the little pieces, I've cut these out. And let me let me say, all of my ephemera I did on, I, I took my um, printed pages and I put them on thicker paper. So this is actually three layers of, well, this is actually three layers. The, the pockets and the tucks and the tags um, is your your copy paper and then I already had some coffee dyed paper glued together and so um, I glued all my ephemera pieces onto that and I cut them out now when you go with that thickness it makes it very difficult to get your folds exactly right so really two is enough for these I would go you know three pages thick for your tags and stuff just so they have a little more um, bulk or heft to them uh, you know because you'll be taking them in and out but these, you know, all these kind of little pieces like this, um, you can do like, you know, your copy paper uh, or, you know, you're, you can use cardstock, obviously, for this. Um, as y'all know, I don't, you know, buy much cardstock because it's just so expensive. And I use a lot of uh, junk mail to make my pages that I back with uh, because usually my junk mail has a, a plain side on one side and then I, you know, just glue like the the two uh, printed sides together and then I have a plain page on each side so um, anyway um, however you want to do it that's up to you I've cut fussy cut all my flowers out um, inked around them so everything is ready I cut out all the belly band pieces inked around them so all that's ready so everything has been pre-cut and uh, folded when necessary, inked around, so my ephemera pieces are ready to go. Um, I have been committing like two um, two videos or an hour long or more to uh, each day to honoring G. Kerr. Now, I have to cut that back a little bit because I do not do not have time with my health the way it is and um, the technical difficulties that I've been having. As a matter of fact, my webcam kind of died again. And so I've got to figure it out, and I think it's a computer issue. I think my computer is not recognizing things and recording. It actually shows a picture, but it's just simply not recording. It shows that it is, but it's really not. So it's tricking me. All right, one thing I want to show you. when you, If you're using pages that do not print border looks like mine, and you trim your pages off, whether it's your coffee dyed papers to make them the same size, or you know whether it's these pages, save these pieces that you cut off. Because you can make, um, oh my lord, what are they called? Anyway, let me just show you. I fold this down like this, and then I take, and I just start folding. And so what I have here is one of these, um, oh my lord, I can't even think what they're called now. Sorry, y'all. My mind kind of just went blank. Uh, so what will happen with this is once I get this all folded up, you can either sew it down. And some people say, you know, I am not going to sew or I don't have a sewing machine or whatever. You can stick a little spot of glue. Well, I don't know what I did with my little glue bottle. Isn't that special? This is probably... Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh... You can stick a little dab of glue under each one to hold them down. Or you can use a stapler to do it. And, of course, if you use, you know, your, your white glue or PVA glue, you know, you're just going to have to hold them for a minute, you know, until it holds down. Ruffles, that's what they're called, ruffles. 
I don't know why I couldn't think of that. So, um, you know, and it doesn't take long just to put one little spot of glue under your little folds. They do not need to be, e your edges don't need to be even. Uh, these don't need to be the same size, you know, just whatever. Now, if, if your ruffle is not long enough, just add another piece of paper to it. All right, so let me oh, stick a little bit of glue in here, and I'll show you what it looks like stapled as well because, you know, being stapled does not look bad at all. As a matter of fact, with staples, you can make it kind of look like faux stitching. All right, so let's just, I've already inked the edges of this, and I didn't on this one. I guess I could real quick. I did not want to bore y'all with watching me ink stuff. Sorry about that. I wasn't thinking about having to add to it. And I usually, you know, have like about an inch size uh, strips. Like I said, none of it has to be even. It doesn't have to be the same size. You know, this is something that you can use. Um, and it uses up your, your thin paper strips. Of course, you can use your thin paper strips to make belly bands with. Um, you know, so don't throw your little paper strips away. You know, recycle, recycle. Okay, so I'm going to turn this edge under. Like that. I'm going to kind of put a little spot of glue down here. All right. And then I'm just going to attach that on there. And you can't even tell that I've added another piece. But folding that piece under and gluing it kind of gives it, you know, that edge like it's a continuation and not just a raw edge. Like I said, these do not need to be perfect. They, you know, don't even have to be close. You can have them running off one side or the other, you know, kind of like that one's doing. I'm not even going to try to fix it because, you know, it's, it's like, I mean, this is a, you know, a junk journal and, you know, it's a ruffle. So this is kind of how your ruffle will look, you know, and then <clears throat> I didn't glue that down. All right. So then you would take this, get a piece of paper, and we'll say this is your page right here. And you can take this fabric ruffle, I mean this fabric, whatever this is, paper ruffle, and run it down the side of your page, and it looks really cute. So, um, you know, when you have decorative papers that you're using these little strips off of, you can, you know, pick colors that are in here, you know, from your ruffles. If you have, say, this has got pinks in it, you know, you could use pink inks, you know, or you could use uh, a gray or kind of a black ink to do your edges with just to make them a little bit different. But it makes cute, cute, cute little ruffles. Now, if you don't want to glue like that, you can always staple. And, you know, it, it doesn't have to be even, you know, it doesn't have to be consistent. Just, you know, kind of. So, you know, I kind of do like the middle. And see, if you do this, you really don't even have to glue. You just, you know, staple. And see, that does not look bad at all. And then if you wanted to, you could come back with a, you know, a colored marker and uh, color your staples. Now, a, another trick to, to that is... Um, before you get started, you can use colored staples, and those look really good um, on there. And so, you know, you can kind of create kind of a faux stitch look uh, just by doing that. You know, and you just keep folding up to make it whatever length that you wanted to. You know, and you can sit and make ruffles while you're, you know, watching TV in the evening or, you know, whatever you do in your spare time. This is something to keep your hands busy, and they look absolutely adorable in a journal. So I just wanted to give you that idea, you know, like these strips, you could do the same thing. Now I have already backed these, so this would be really hard to bend. You need like a thinner uh, piece, you know, single, um, you know, piece of paper to, you know, to fold up like this to make a ruffle. So um, anyway, really, really cute, great ideas. Now um, I'm going to show you, uh, oh, I was, what I was going to tell you is I'm going to limit my video uh, for, for you know this series of honoring uh, other people to one 30 minute video the reason for that is it does take time to prepare and make sure that I'm using that person's techniques now I do have a whole well actually I have two um, journals full of Jukur inspirations and 
the instructions in there. However, and I did, you know, but I kind of bulk make when I learned the technique. So I have some in my stash that are already made. However, I have never followed my written instructions to make these pieces. So I'm having to go back and make them ahead of time to make sure my written directions match, um, you know, so that I'm just not a, a total klutz on camera. I know y'all wouldn't mind, but, you know, I do. I, I want to make this go as smoothly as possible. So that was, you know, my my thought process in, um, you know, following my written instructions ahead of time. Also, I'm, I really don't have any time with, you know, like, like my health and, you know, stuff to make journals right now because I'm spending so much time, you know, making sure that my directions are right and, um, you know, everything that is going on. So I'm not having time to make journals for sale uh, or to do other teaching process videos because I'm trying to work on a series um, to, you know, junk journal on a tea tiny budget, uh, you know, using things that you have around the house, you know, minimal supplies, things like that. Um, a lot of times, you know, we go to somebody's channel and they have every piece of equipment imaginable and you think, oh, I could never do all that because I just don't have the stuff. I can't afford to buy the stuff. And so that is my goal in the, um, uh, you know, the, the series for the, you know, junk journaling on a tiny budget. You know, I've taught how to make glue and, you know, just how to make some marbled paper, uh, j just different things. So I want to be able to continue that series as well. So um, I, I prayed about it. I thought about it. And, and I believe that one 30 minute video a day is is good. Um, and of course, you know, I'm going to take July to finish, uh, my 30 days of honoring G. Kerr and then, um, you know, whatever days are left in the month, I'm going to take, you know, for me and then August, I'll start with the next person that, that will be honored, uh, for a 30 day period. So, um, you know, and that, when you do 30 minutes a day for, you know, for 30 days, that's 15 hours a month. And that's a lot of time, um, to, commit to you know honoring someone else um i would love to have more and more time because you know the like g kerr is an amazing an amazing talent uh she's an amazing artist and you know 30 hours even couldn't cover all that i have learned from her so that's kind of where we're headed with this now the first piece that we're going to make is going to be a little trifold pouch and this is just a piece of my um background page or G's background page actually attached to a piece of coffee dyed paper and this is why I hate using glue stick I use glue stick on this and guess what it is coming back up and I hate that I am not a fan of glue sticks I know some people are and they love them and you know I've tried so many different brands and you know, spent a lot of money on glue sticks and I will use them if I know that I'm going to sew a piece down. And, and I do like to sew my pieces, but for purpose of this, I'm trying to show y'all that you don't need to sew a single thing. All right, there is not a up or a down when uh, I'm going to fold this uh, piece. So um, what I want to do is to, you know, like I said, glue this down, So then, which I did. And so now I'm going to use a piece of coffee dyed paper, I think. I think. Okay, let's just get a fresh piece because I don't know what I'm going to do with my other one. All right, take a piece of coffee dyed paper and then I'm going to fold over about an inch or so. Okay, I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, exact, just maybe about an inch. And I'm not even measuring, it's just kind of, you know, guessing what an inch looks like. And I want to kind of line that edge up, make sure. All right. So now I'm going to take, well, what did I just do with my piece, y'all? Well, don't I feel like an idiot? Here it is. All right, so now I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take another piece of decorative paper. Just 
I had everything laid out, y'all, and now I'm confused. All right, and then I'm going to put this under. I did this backwards. Did I do this backwards? Oh, I need, I know what I need to do. I need to cut this. So I want to measure down about three and a half inches on this piece. So I will measure this. You can use a ruler or you can use one of these, you know, little handy dandy cutting mats or whatever. However you want to do it. I had everything laid out. Now I don't. Okay. So three and a half inches. And it's just kind of about, I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly three and a half, just, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. So now I have that, and now I'm going to take, um, let me close this up. I don't know why I set that down without closing it. Okay, now I'm going to take this piece and put it under the flap. Now this is not going to be this long when we're done, so don't don't you know worry about that. Just kind of stick it in there. As a matter of fact, you can take it to one edge if you want to, because that's going to end up getting trimmed off. All right, so we're going to put this under here, um, and then we are going to glue this down to this page. Okay, so I want to go ahead and put, and then you know what we're going to do is you know once we get that glued down, we're going to push this over and glue it down as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and apply glue to, um, I guess I could trim that down first. Nah, I'm just going to go ahead and apply glue to this whole thing. About to there, I think. I like to kind of smooth my glue out. I don't like those big globs under there because, you know, the paper never sits right. You can use a brush. You can use your finger. You don't have to do this at all, you know. However you want to, uh, you know, if you like the streaky glue, that's fine. Uh, I just prefer to kind of smooth it out some. Um, that way I kind of make sure it all gets covered uh, evenly. You know, I don't have those ridges in there to deal with. All right, so now I'm going to place this right in that fold like that and mess that down and see if I can get my air bubbles out now you can use a card you can use a brayer you can use your hand I do that most of the time you use my hand those are the best tools God gave us okay so I think I have that down pretty good now I'm going to fold this flap back over like this I just kind of want to gently, because that's really wet, I want to gently make sure that that's down. Okay. Now, I'm going to trim this off. What I do is I just turn this over, and I'm going to trim this excess off. So, I'm just going to use my scissors to do that. Oh, I'm sorry I knocked y'all. God, I hope I didn't make you dizzy. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim um, this off because, you know, we absolutely don't need that on there. Okay. There's my little thingy. All right, so that is that piece. Now, we're going to take this piece like this and attach this to here. And it's okay if this is longer, we can trim it off. And we are going to attach this on here by gluing down both sides and the bottom. Okay? Now, if you're using a decorative piece like this with a design, you know, that has a specific way, make sure it's turned the correct way so that, the, you know, the top is facing up. 
uh, you know, or else you're going to glue your little pocket down on the wrong end. In my case, it doesn't matter. Okay. not very even down there is it I can trim that make it look good now if I were going to sew this I would sew around the edges and right up the middle it would help if I waited till this was dry Trim this off. That is probably not going to be right. Okay. Fix this. Uh oh. This did not stick at all. What is the problem? You know, it seems like some paper just soaks up the glue, like it's really, really thirsty, and, you know, some paper. It's like it just kind of pulls there. It's crazy, isn't it? Okay. How are we looking? We got a little edge going on here. All right. Looking good. All right. Yeah, I really should wait till that's dry. What is going on with my glue? Well, I need to make some glue, y'all. I end up having to go into my reserve stash of not homemade glue to use. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and fold this into thirds. Like about, I mean, you can measure it exactly if you want to, but I kind of just try to, oh, I don't even know if I'm in frame, but I just try to, um, you know, kind of figure it out like that. Kind of line up your edges, make sure they look good. Of course, you can trim them, you know, uh, as long as you don't, you know, have to trim your pocket down there. All right, mash those down real good. And see, that is not real straight, so I may tuck that one in and use that on the outside. Of course, I need to trim this little piece off right here. So today, I'm going to have to coffee dye some more paper. I have some coffee dye. I just need to iron it. And then I need to uh, coffee dye some more. Well, I guess I just didn't even fold that straight. That's why that looks like it does. All right. So whichever flap you want to be the outside can be the outside. It, it doesn't matter. So now once we have uh, you know that folded, then we're going to come back and we're going to apply a little line of glue under both of these uh, folds right here. All right, I'm fixing to get cut off on the camera, but y'all kind of get the idea. That's what that little alarm means is uh, you're fixing to get cut off. I did not let this dry good enough. Goodness gracious. All right, let's try this again. Okay, I'm going to um, stop this here. Y'all see that we've made a little pouch here. And then when we come back uh, for tomorrow, we're going to um, make pieces to go in this. And this piece is going to ultimately go in our journal. So that is going to just be absolutely adorable as a little pouch to fit in a pocket in our journal. All right. Um, I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Um, thank you for joining me today. If you're a subscriber, thank you. If you're not, please hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. Be sure to go over and check out G. Kerr's channel. Um, you know, I hope that's what I have done with this series is to inspire you to check her out, to follow her, and to learn her techniques and to use her, her digis. All right, y'all. Have a blessed day. See you tomorrow. Bye.